Hello everybody and welcome back to the Inner Sanctum YouTube channel. I'm your host, Aris Demetakos, and today we're back with another episode of Player Spotlight. Now, for those who don't know what this series is, firstly, there's five other episodes where you can go on the YouTube channel and watch them, but this is where we go through some players on the periphery of the Socceroos squad, if they're in Graham Arnold's plans, if they're not in Graham Arnold's plans, and basically see where they sit um, in terms of the Socceroos squad for the World Cup in November and whether or not these players can get a look in. Um, as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, this, is ep this episode is on Cam Devlin, so let's get into it. So as we always start episodes of this series, let's go through who is Cam Devlin. He's a 24-year-old defensive midfielder, starting starting his career at the Western Sydney Wanderers in their youth academy, playing there for two seasons before moving across to the Sky Blue, so making that trans-Sydney switch. He spent two years in the MPL setup before mo making his senior debut for Sydney FC in the 2018-2019 season, making seven substitute appearances across that season. After rejecting a current contract to stay at Sydney at the end of that season, he moved to the Wellington Phoenix, spending a couple of seasons there, uh, making his, making sporadic appearances for the first team in the first couple of months before holding down a permanent starting role in the back end of the year. He played 44 times for the New Zealand club before moving to Hearts of Middle Odeon in Scotland at the start of last season, where he played 25 times for the Edinburgh-based club last season. He's made his first, he's made all, he's made an appearance, sorry, in all three of Hearts' games this season, making a substitute appearance. In, in their first two before starting the most recent one against Dundee United where, where he registered an assist in a 4-1 win. In that game he played in a double pivot um, in a 3-4-2-1 in a formation so we'll touch on a little bit that uh, we'll touch on that a little bit in the next section where we look at his player profile but as you can see here yeah, from Cam Devlin and, and his profile as, as, a, as a player if you were to call it that in his history we see that he has spent some time in Australia has been in the youth academy has spent time in the A-League before making that step to, to European football and to Scotland where a lot of um, Socceroos or aspiring Socceroos and a lot of Australian talent have gone and found home um, in Scotland so it'll be interesting to see how successful he can get or he can be up there but as I just mentioned let's go through his player profile and really see what Cam Dev Devlin likes to offer on the pitch. So as we touched on in the last episode with Kenny Dougal, we are looking at Cam Devlin, who is a real defensive-minded midfielder, as I mentioned at the top of the show. He is primarily a defensive midfielder, although he can play slightly further up if necessary. However, unlike Kenny Dougal, who last episode we kind of dissected his game style and, and came to the conclusion that he wasn't a traditional defensive midfielder um, in, in all certain terms, do, um, Cam Devlin rather is more of a, de of a traditional defensive midfielder. As we bring up his heat map right here, he's very adept at playing in both a deep double pivot as well as like a more offensive double pivot which which you find in more three at the back formations or even a 4-4-2 four, four, formation. Um, he offers both destroyer attributes in terms of his tackling and his positioning. He's very strong. He's able to put out spot fires and act as a real um, base in front of the in, in front of the back line and acts as their protector as well as being press proof enough for him to be comfortable in possession as we can see by his heat map here that he is very capable of kind of pushing all along the ground um, especially shuttling across that back line and really offering a lot in terms of versatility in roles and versatility in positions. He can play, like I said, slightly um, higher up in a double pivot, like I said, in like a three at the back or a four at the back or a four four two formation rather. His physical attributes allows him to excel in that role. He is very, um, he has a lot of stamina. He can get up and down the pitch quite comfortably. He has a pretty good um, engine, like I said just then, and he has the ability to offer his defensive attributes higher up the ground as well. So he doesn't really get nosebleeds if he ventures into the final third at all. Like we said, his heat map, just like he, like I said with the heat map, it covers he it shows that he covers the pitch quite comfortably. He isn't restricted to one side and has the ability to shuttle across the back line, put out spot fires as well as being able to pick the ball up in certain spaces and kind of recycle possession, be that like first offensive verve for Hearts or for the Socceroos, depending on who he plays for. As some key stats that have come out for his from his last season at Hearts is that he had 3.3 .3 tackles per game, which is a very, very excellent stat. Um, 0.6 key passes, which just shows that while he's not overly offensive and while he doesn't over show like a massive offensive drive or anything like that he is able to really pick a pass and can play through the lines if given the time and space he won 5.9 ground jewels um, on average last season that's 55 percent as well as having 1.4 interceptions per game that just goes to show his tackling and his interceptions are, are a real strong suit strong suit of his game and his football IQ as well is fantastic allowing him to thrive in that kind of anchor man such defensive midfielder role really allowing him to be a real um, defensive pivot, but in a, in a single pivot or, or a double pivot, allows him to be a real defensive kind of anchor for his side. 
he, this what this allows is that it, he allows the the more flashy and the creative um, stuff like the assists and the more offensive players to really excel at their game because he provides that protection that is needed for the offensive players to be given freedom. Um, we, we can see this now as we'll touch on a bit later on what he can offer for the Socceroos with the likes of Aaron Moy and, and Adrian Hustic, but this is obviously very evident through through Hearts of Middle Odeon, who quite often play advanced fullbacks, quite often play some wingbacks. So having a double pivot, including Cam Devlin in that, allows the wingbacks to push on, allows the front three to really be focused on their attacking output rather than focusing on the defensive side of the game. So let's take a look at his future for the Socceroos because unlike we have unlike we have in the previous episodes, Cam Devlin actually hasn't made his Socceroos debut yet. So we'll skip the Socceroos um, career to date as we normally as we normally wouldn't do. But of course, like I said, he hasn't made his Socceroos debut. So we'll skip that section. Let's go straight to where his future holds and let's take a real dissection as to what Cam Devlin can offer for the Socceroos. So let's go straight to where the future lies for Cam Devlin um, in terms of the Socceroos career. Now, when looking at it kind of on an objective level, he's probably Australia's best true defensive midfielder. Of course, we all know the system that Graham Arnold plays quite often deploys a single pivot in midfield, and that's quite often um, occupied by Aaron Moy. However, if Arnold wants to change his system or perhaps go for a different different type of defensive midfielder, Cam Devlin is the guy because he offers something very different to the likes of Aaron Moy and Hustich and even Jackson Irvine to an extent. His biggest rival for positions or even rival for role is Kenny Dougal, who we touched on in the last episode. Now, like I said, playing in Scotland will give him exposure to some of Europe's more elite players and players that he would more likely verse on an international level, giving him better chances to get into that soccer squad. Because like we've seen, um, Graham Arnold does like to favour those favor those playing in Europe, playing against higher quality opponents on a regular basis. Um, those those playing in Europe tend to be those opponents that Graham Arnold looks for. He could develop a, a nice um, kind of club and international connection with teammate um, Nathaniel Atkinson, who of course plays for, plays for Hearts as well. This could translate into the national team setup. Both players are smokies for the squad. Both players could add a bit of youthful exuberance that um, has plagued the Socceroos in terms of the lack of youth, has plagued the Socceroos for quite a while. So introducing both of these two players into the fold could add another another, another dynamic for the Socceroos um, heading into the future. Now, if we look at it from a tactical perspective, I feel like he does his best role in a in a double pivot, as we brought up um, in the in the previous section. He does his best role in a double pivot, whether that's a more advanced double pivot in a three at the back formation, or even a four four two, or a more traditional double pivot in a four two three one style system, or even a four triple two style system. Um, I think he's the perfect partner to someone like an Aaron Moy. He could be the engine to the Rolls Royce of of Aaron Moy in a sense. Moy can just get onto the ball and be that dictator from de- from deep allow allow him to really control the tempo of the game and really act as the the anchor in terms of the offensive kind of deep lying playmaker in a sense he can really drive the Socceroos forward through his um, passing ability and through his just offensive nature whereas Devlin is that more engine running around him putting out spot fires acting as the legs to Moy's brilliance in a sense as well as this I feel like this is probably the way, the way you can get the most out of both these players. Assuming the likes of Tom Rogic and Adrian Hustic are probably going to be fit and available to play in the World Cup, it will be interesting to see what, how Arnold finds that midfield mix because there isn't a real um, real clear-cut um, solution because obviously Hustic, Rogic and Moy are three of the most talented players or probably the top three talent, most talented players in the squad. And if Australia can have any chance at getting some results in the World Cup, you'd expect all three of them to feature quite heavily heavily in every single game so it's about finding that correct midfield mix whether or not that's putting um Hustich out on the right hand side where he has played a little bit um, at club level as well as at, as international level as well maybe that could be a solution but I feel like if Devlin's going to play and if Graham Arnold wants a a deep lying like a ball winning midfield and an anchor man sitting at the base of midfield he should be partnered alongside Aaron Moy because I feel like they complement each other brilliantly and like I mentioned um, when talking about his Hearts career he allowed putting him in a double pivot allows the other players to really uh, show their offensive verve uh, because it allows the likes of Moy, Hustich, Rogic to be more influential in the final third not giving him the, not giving them the burden of defensive responsibilities that they would need if Aaron Moy was going to be the single pivot in midfield for an example Allowing them to focus on their attacking game a lot more will give 
will give Australia the biggest chance of winning, and Devlin is very, very capable at just being that reliable defensive midfielder that can give license to the more attacking players to really make an influence on the game. So yeah, let's. That's the future for for Cam Devlin. Whether or not he gets into the squad in November, he's going. We're just gonna have to wait and see. He has, like I said, he's made three appearances for Hearts so far this season. He has started once and got an assist in that game. I think if Hearts have a good season, Devlin could be in the limelight a lot more, and that he's bigger because of the role that he plays there's not a lot of midfielders like him of course we spoke about Kenny Dougal last episode but I feel like he is a real smoky for the squad in November and if his performances can maintain it at a good level especially playing in Scotland if Hearts can can challenge the likes of Rangers and Celtic I feel like there's no there's no question why Cam Devlin can't be in and amongst the starting 11 come November so yes thank you all very much for watching another episode of Player Spotlight make sure you leave your thoughts in the comment section below make sure you like the video subscribe to the Inner Sanctum YouTube channel leave your thoughts like I said on who on on this episode and who else you would like to see be given a player spotlight in the future so yes thank you all very much for watching make sure you like subscribe and see you guys next time goodbye